Springtails. A jovial name for an equally jolly group of hexapods. I mean, look at this guy. I... I, I love you. That's it. That's the intro. Just look at him. I mean, I'm sorry if you're expecting more, but I feel like this lad speaks for him. Welcome to the Insect Spotlight Project, a channel dedicated to shining a light on insects, spiders, and any other creepy crawlies that get left out of the ecologic spotlight. Today, we are talking about the class Calembola, better known as the Springtails. This is the second of a three-part series covering the Entignatha, three groups that were once considered insects but have now been separated off into their own clades. As we mentioned in the Protura video, these groups, along with the insects, form the subphylum Hexapoda, referencing how they all have six legs. And while Hexapoda is monophyletic, meaning they all trace back to a unique common ancestor, the Entignatha is paraphyletic, as their evolutionary history is mixed in with that of the insects. There has been an ongoing discussion as to how they're mixed in, and for more information on that, I encourage you to go back and watch the Protura video, linked above. But for this video, let's just dive right in, as we have a lot of ground to cover. The springtails are a massive group of arthropods. Not in size, of course, they're only a few millimeters, but in diversity and abundance. There are over 8,000 described species of Calemblin, and likely tens of thousands more just waiting to be discovered. You can find them across all reaches of the globe, from the Arctic to the Antarctic, but the only catch is they like moisture. But even then, you can still find some species living life out in the desert. And where there's one, there's many. Springtails are very abundant, and in some areas you can find tens of thousands of them in a single square meter of habitat. Now, yes, I know they're small, but if they're so geographically widespread, diverse, and abundant, how have so many people managed to avoid these adorable acrobats? Well, many people probably have come across them, they just didn't realize what they were. So to avoid this situation in the future, let's talk about how to identify springtails and what makes them so unique. As mentioned, they are tiny, like millimeters tiny. Actually, the smallest species has individuals that are one-tenth of a millimeter in length. So from afar, they just look like specks. But up close, they are far from ordinary. Now, springtails can be a whole suite of different colors, so I would not rely on pigmentation as an identifier. Now, in terms of general body plan, the springtails fall into three main categories. The globular ones, the plump ones, and the elongate ones. Now, this is actually three of the four orders of springtails. The Symphipleona, the Pedoromorpha, and the Entomobriomorpha, respectively. The fourth order is the Neelypleona, which is a little more obscure, and frankly also pretty round. Now lucky for us, there are also a few unique traits found in the Columbula. The first is also the secret to their impressive hops, the furcula. This is a branch structure on the abdomen that is held up against the body when at rest. It's fastened into place by a toothed structure called the retinaculum. Then, when duty calls, the furcula is launched against the ground at impressive speeds, pushing the Columbulin into the air and giving them their common name, springtails. However, there are some groups of springtails where the furcula is reduced or even absent. Luckily, there is one trait you can find across all Columbulin taxa, the colophore. This is a peculiar structure composed of two vesicles that aid in water uptake, though they also seem to assist in things like surface attachment, oxygen absorption, aerial maneuvering, and more. Actually, the name Columbula is inspired by the colophore. Kala means glue, and embolon means plug, both of which are referencing this unique structure. And remember, springtails are hexapods, so you can count on them having six legs. But let's go over some ways they differ from the other hexapods, since those are the ones you're likely to mix up. Unlike the insects, the Antignatha have internal mouthparts, and Columbula is no exception. Columbula mouthparts are repressed into a cavity in the head and exerted when feeding. Insects also have cerci, which springtails do not. Most insects will also have wings when they're adults, and springtails never have wings. 
and most insects will have compound eyes, while springtails have groupings of simple eyes, or ocelli, if they have eyes at all. Now, as for not mixing them up with the other Antignatha, this is a bit more straightforward. Proturans don't have antennae. Springtails do. Springtails don't have circe. Diplurans do, and prominent ones at that. But springtails don't just pop out of the egg looking like this. Okay, actually, they pretty much do. Springtails are ametabolous, meaning they lack any sort of metamorphosis, and the juveniles just look like smaller versions of the adults. Except somehow, against all odds, cuter. It does still start with an egg, though. Females will lay batches of eggs in moist little pockets of substrate that'll take a couple weeks or so to hatch out. Once they hatch out, the immatures will feed on the same sorts of things the adults do. Which is a lot. Columbolins are not picky eaters, so settle in while I go over a brief list of some of the things you can find springtails munching on. <clears throat> Decaying plant matter, fungi, algae and diatoms, pollen, bacteria, fecal matter, exuvia, seedy, mucus, worm urine, insect carcasses, nematodes, other springtails, and more, omnivorous kings. Now this is the group as a whole. Some columbolins are gonna be more specialized on one or two of those things. And though columbolins do eat a lot of different things, a lot of different things also eat them. From predators as small as mites to as large as frogs, springtails have danger lurking around every corner. But they're not helpless. Most springtails have that whole furculo retinaculum situation going on, so at the first sight of danger, they can just launch themselves somewhere else. In select cases, you can even find chemical defense. One species, Tetrodontophora by Elenensis, releases noxious compounds from specialized cells when disturbed. And this has been shown to deter even large predators like ground beetles. And if all this jumping and oozing keeps them alive long enough, they'll molt into their adult stage, ready to mate. Columbolins practice indirect sperm transfer. The males will create a series of spermatophores, basically a package of sperm, for the female to uptake. These spermatophores are often suspended above the surface on thin silken stalks. The real challenge is actually getting the female to uptake it. There are a variety of mating rituals the male will employ to get the female to accept his spermatophore. Oftentimes, this is some form of trying to physically move the female toward it. They'll crawl under her, crawl over her, push her forward, and whatever else they can do to corral her toward that little bead of hope. It all honestly just comes off a little desperate. Some species do have more manners, where they'll greet each other face to face with little antennal movements. Though, a lot of these actually clasp their antennae together to really lock it down, so go figure. And sometimes, after all this, the female just eats the spermatophore anyway. So much for the whole worst she can say is no thing. But don't feel too bad for them, the males will also go around eating each other's spermatophores. But hopefully, after all this chaos, the female will use somebody's spermatophore to fertilize batches of eggs and continue the cycle. Or she won't. Many springtails can reproduce parthenogenically, creating fully viable offspring from unfertilized eggs. Either way, life goes on. And that's good news for us. Springtails are critical in decomposition and nutrient cycling. As we mentioned, they eat a lot of different things, and a lot of those things are not the easiest to digest. So as we go about our day, there's an army of springtails beneath our feet working hard to keep our soils clean and moving. Speaking of moving soil, they're also important aerators of soil. Many species of springtail live underground, and though their tunnels are tiny, they create little passageways for water and oxygen to penetrate deeper into the soil. And as we mentioned, lots of things utilize springtails as a food source. Even vertebrates, like reptiles and amphibians, need these columbolins as a reliable prey item, especially early in their development. Springtails don't pose any real danger. They can't bite, they can't sting, they don't spread disease, and they're rarely ever agricultural pests. I said rarely, not never. However, they can be a nuisance, and a mental toll for some. Let me explain. Let's talk about springtail infestation. There are two categories of people. Those that have never struggled with it and don't really get what the big deal is, 
and those who have dedicated hours upon hours of their time to mitigate the ongoing springtail invasion. Though they don't cause any direct harm, nobody really likes hundreds or even thousands of little critters invading their home. So if this is you, first, take a deep breath, remember you're not in any danger. Second, though it may be beating a dead horse, get some dehumidifiers. But overall, we like springtails, and we do want them around. I mean, look at that guy. To keep the springtails on your property happy, they need organic material. Leaf litter and woody debris are great, and it'll also help the fungi prosper on your property. That's a good thing, which will then in turn feed other springtails. So it's a win all around. Also, having different layers of vegetation to create little shaded damp spots can go a long way. Just maybe don't have those shaded damp spots right by your open windowsill. Anyways, thank you all for listening. And if you like the content, please remember to like and subscribe to keep up to date with future videos. And if you have any favorite species from this group, or any fun facts I missed, which I'm sure there's a lot of for this one, please leave them in the comments below. I'd love to hear about it. Peace, y'all.